Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with my big fat Greek baked beans. That's right, if people ask me who makes the best baked beans, I might have said someone in Boston or maybe some barbecue joint in Texas. But ever since I discovered this very hearty, incredibly delicious giant bean casserole, my answer now is Greece. And by the way, the big and fat in this recipe's name just doesn't refer to the size of the beans. Okay, the flavors in this dish are also very gigantic. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by adding one pound of gigante beans to this bowl, or gigante beans. And as anyone that follows San Francisco baseball knows, that means giants. And in the spirit of full disclosure, I'm not actually using true gigante beans. I'm using something called a Corona bean, which is very close in size. And we'll give some more info about that in the blog post. But bottom line, we're going to use the largest dry bean we can find. And what we'll do is cover those with water and let them soak overnight, which I was doing very late in the evening, which explains the terrible lighting. And by the way, make sure you use plenty of water. Otherwise, this is what's going to happen. Okay, the next morning mine looked like this. And I had half my beans still in water and half out, which might cause uneven cooking. So use plenty. But anyway, what we'll do once our beans are soaked is go ahead and drain those. And we'll add them to this pot with a whole bunch of cold, fresh water. Along with nothing else except two bay leaves. And we will bring that up to a boil over high heat. At which point we will give it a stir, reduce our heat to medium. And we'll simmer this until these beans are just tender but not soft. Which is going to take, I'll guess, between 45 and 60 minutes. Okay, it really depends on the bean and the size. And then here's the deal. If we cook these all the way, the dish will still work perfectly well, except once baked, the beans might start to fall apart a little bit. But on the other hand, if we undercook the beans and they're not tender enough, because of all the stuff we're gonna cook these with, they will take a really, really long time to get soft when we bake them, if they actually even get soft. And that's another point we're gonna review in the post, since I attempted a little bit of an experiment to cook these a little less than I usually do, which was almost a problem. But anyway, the point is we're going to simmer these until they're just tender but not too soft. At which point we will drain those very well, add them to our casserole dish, and begin adding all the rest of the ingredients, starting with some diced red onion, followed by a whole bunch of sliced or minced garlic. And then we're going to need some tomato. And I'll be going with tomato sauce and tomato paste. And by the way, some recipes call for fresh chopped tomatoes, so use those if you want. I mean, you are after all the Play-Doh of your tomato. And you know my philosophy, use whatever you think will work best. And then after the tomato, we'll go ahead and add some honey, which ideally would be Greek pine honey, which we might not be able to get. And if you can't, just use clover honey, which is what I'm using here. And then after the honey, we're gonna add a whole bunch of freshly chopped dill. And by the way, if you ever have the winter blues or any other kind of blues, buy yourself a bunch of fresh dill and just stick your face in it and smell it and its fresh, bright green smell will actually make you feel better. All right, nobody knows why, but it totally works. But anyway, let's continue on with some olive oil, as well as some kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and a generous touch of cayenne pepper. And then we will finish this up with a little bit of red wine vinegar, and last but not least, a little bit of water, which doesn't look like water, it looks like chicken stock. And that's because I rinsed out the measuring cup I had my tomatoes in, so as not to waste. And that's it. We'll take a spoon and give this a very thorough mixing, which should take you a few minutes, because we have a lot of different ingredients with different shapes and sizes and viscosities. So get in there and get in there deep. And keep stirring until you think everything's very well distributed. And then what we'll do is transfer this onto a lined baking sheet, because there's definitely going to be a little bit of splattering plus possible bubble overs. And that's it, it's now ready to transfer into the center of a 350 degree oven for about an hour or so, or until bubbling it beautifully caramelized, and of course until our beans are nice and soft. And if everything goes according to plan, it should look a little something like this. But as gorgeous as that is, we cannot tell just by looking. So make sure you test your beans for softness. And if they have cooked enough, what we're gonna to wanna to do is stir all this together. Okay, because a lot of that olive oil is going to be floating on top, we want to mix that back in. Along with, of course, all that caramelized goodness. So we'll go ahead and stir all that together. And I'll go ahead and steal one more little taste on my way to grab some feta cheese. Since I'm going to crumble a generous amount of that on the top to garnish. And of course, because this is a Greek recipe, we are required to drizzle over a little more olive oil. 
And then we'll go ahead and finish up with a little more of our fresh and fragrant dill. And that's it. I don't care where you're from. That, my friends, is a beautiful dish of beans. And even though this was way too hot to actually appreciate, I went in for a taste anyway. But despite being too hot, it was still amazing. And the funny thing is, even though this is from half a world away, there are so many similarities to the kind of baked beans we would serve with barbecue here in America. All right, we have a lot of the same similar sweet and sour and savory and aromatic flavors happening. Plus, when you factor in that beautifully briny, subtly funky feta, it really does amplify all that other goodness. And this really would be magnificent with any kind of roasted meats. But I didn't have any of that stuff, so I just put some in a bowl and topped it with a whole chunk of feta as a meat substitute. And again, we'll finish with a little olive oil and dill. And I've never claimed I could survive on a vegetarian diet, but if I had to, this would definitely be in the regular rotation. Oh, and by the way, the shortcut to this recipe is just drain some canned beans and do all the same thing and just bake it till it looks good. So something to keep in mind if you're short on time. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling my big fat Greek baked beans. Ever since that movie came out, people have been using that expression in the recipe name whether it made sense or not. I mean, come on, you can't call something my big fat Greek kale salad. But at least this time, thanks to our big beans, the name fits. But anyway, no matter what you call it, it is easy, it is beautiful, and it is extremely delicious. Which is why I really do hope you give it a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.